So continuing with our conversation uh, pertaining to the color, the diffuse color adjustment. Um, in the last session, I was talking about the random and uh, choosing a, uh, a, a variety of random multipliers. All right, and, and it gets you started pretty good. You can actually, uh, you could actually just use the random until you come up with something that really like in the scene. A little, little haphazard. Personally, I like to be in more control. And so it's that control that we're going to talk about now. All right, now here's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to come back to the lighting panel. And I did this in several sessions, uh, maybe a dozen sessions ago. I said, I don't want any color in my scene. I really don't. And so I use this preset here, which is called neutral. So I'm going to punch that again basically to reset all of my colors but this will also reset all of my lighting lighting okay lighting and coloring are hand in hand in terms of how the software is designed but in my mind i think of lighting and coloring as almost two different things and i always go for lighting first and coloring second if I press this neutral, I'm going to eradicate all of my lighting. Now that would be my object, uh, specular and diffuse lighting. I would uh, erase all of my ambient settings. Um, I would even erase the, uh, the global light position or whatever that preset is set for. Now, this is a very handy uh, set of precepts. I'm going to talk about that a little later. But I want to be careful that I don't eradicate all my work. So, okay. So, uh, and, and by the way, uh, I have saved this. I, I did it when we weren't uh, recording. So I do have a, uh, I can revert from an MP3 file. M3P file. Okay. So, so I'm following my own suggestion. I don't want to get, I don't want to get too carried away um, and go too deep with my adjustments without having a recovery save. So let's not press that button because I'm going to lose my lighting, even though I don't really want any of this coloring anymore. So how do I get back to neutral? All right. So I'm going to come back to my my object. Here's my diffuse object coloring, which raises this window right here. Now, all right, now there's a couple things I can do. Uh, I can set my coloring, say, a midpoint randomization uh, in terms of the random multiplier. I'm going to punch that. Now that gives me some pretty distinct coloring. Now, the way you work with this color adjustment window, uh, you come down here on one of the bars and you right click your mouse and that will raise your color palette. Well, I'm gonna choose the gray here. All right, and that installed gray in this color bar. Well, I'm going to do the same thing here and pick gray. And I'm going to do the same thing here and pick gray. And do the same thing here and uh, pick gray. So I'm kind of returning back to my, uh, my original uh, coloring, having retained my lighting settings. All right, I haven't, I haven't bothered any of those just yet. All right, now. So there's another way to do this. I mean, I had right clicked on it and I had picked gray and I okayed it. And that's one way. But you notice here, this uh, sentence down here, it basically says this. Uh, let, me, let me demonstrate this by putting red on this particular color bar. 
I hover my mouse. I'm in a Windows environment, obviously. I'm going to hover my mouse over that bar. I'm going to press the C key. C is in copy. C. I'm going to hover my mouse over this next bar, or this bar, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to press the V key. So I've copied this color bar to this color bar. All right. But I've only, uh, I've only copied actually the primary colors. Because above this is where the specular. All right. And a matter of fact, you see right here, diffuse is at the bottom level of each of the bars. Specular is up here, which would be the, 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 the second from the bottom. All right. And then transparency is all the way at the top here. So this, each of these color bars is uh, the coloring not the lighting, the coloring for diffuse, specular, and transparency. All right. So uh, if I do, if I hover over this and I do a C, not control C, just plain C, C, hover, V. So this way you can copy. All right, so if I hover over here, there's a V, V, and I can, I can continue. I'm continuously pressing the V, as in Victor, key to um, make all of these, um, these color bars, color position bars, probably more technically correct, and I made them all gray. Uh, it's the same thing if I had right raised the color palette, and then I can choose a color. I choose red, all right, uh, hover, C, hover, V. Okay, so that's basically uh, how you get colors into each of these color bars. All right, now, now, uh, I had mentioned that the second level here is your specular, and specular is uh, the light that is uh, reflected off of uh, a surface at a 90-degree angle. Uh, and I had talked about specular uh, maybe uh, three or four or five sessions back, and the specular is actually quite important to uh, give uh, uh, certain surfaces, uh, edges, um, a, a kind of a reflection. Well, you can actually establish a color for your specular reflections. Now, again, I'm just going to turn to random here just to get us started. So this second level of random will install a, a, a gradient or a color uh, for your specular. Now, here again now, I have a I have a random multiplier that's set to one. So I tend to have a very low hue. This is the band you're looking at right up here. This is your specular band right here for each of the the, the, the color bars. Uh, I have a random I, a random multiplier. I'm going to set that for 99, and I'm going to click this random. All right. Now, what's happening here is that the specular colors are trying to basically stay within the range of your diffuse colors. Well, I mean, that, it makes a lot of sense because if you have a diffuse, diffuse color of, say, gray, why would you have a, say, red um, uh, specular reflection? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's, let's try an experiment here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put both of these at 50. I'm going to randomize my diffuse color bar. Now I'm going to randomize my specular. Now you see here how the specular band uh, has some colors in it. 
all right it it's it makes sense that your your specular reflections would be uh similar in nature to your diffuse coloring so there is a relationship between the specular and the diffuse here in the code of this uh, Mandelbald 3D. Now, personally, I think that that was very, very well thought out in terms of the designer or the designers of this application, specifically when it comes down to color. I mean, I don't know any of the people that, um, that uh, uh, developed this Mandelbald 3D, but I think that there was some very, very good talent when it come to when it comes to uh, 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 computer graphics and uh, and visual art, and we're talking about 2010. So what? Thir that was 13 years ago. There was some smart people behind this application. Um, and when we get a really get down into the depths of of this application, and you start exercising it, you can really begin to appreciate just how much power is in our hands for a, with a, a free uh, application that has no subscription and that never calls home uh, to uh, uh, force updates or to try to make money or to reveal our personal private information or information about our computer environment. Um, and, 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 and other positive attributes when it comes to this particular application. Obviously, there's always the downside, you know, you, you got a crash, you're not getting the latest updates from some big corporation, but you work in privacy with no data being, uh, no personal data being revealed, uh, no automatic withdrawals from your checking account to pay for a subscription for this thing, and it is well designed. We'll continue this conversation in the next session. I'll see you there.